Hey guys, welcome. This is Five Good and Five Bad Things with Star Wars The Last Jedi. Now I watched it on the midnight release last Thursday, I then went back and watched it the same day in the evening time, so I watched it twice in one day. I thoroughly enjoyed it. From the outset, I thoroughly enjoyed this film. I think it's a great movie, but it's not without flaws. I'm gonna say my five best things about it. The five worst things that I just really didn't like, and obviously there's gonna be spoilers. So we're gonna kick off with the five bad, okay? going to start with what a lot of people have been saying. If you've watched any reviews of this film, then you, a lot of them have been saying the Casino Planet Detour. Especially watching it the second time round, I was like, oh, it's the fucking animal rights bit. Oh no, not animal cruelty. Yeah, let's free these horse things. And later on, obviously, find out there's a complete waste of time because the pink-haired lady just wouldn't tell anyone her plan, which could have avoided all of those scenes, which could have been put towards better characters like Rey and Kylo. General Hux was one of my favorite characters from The Force Awakens. He, he had this kind of Hitler, tyrannical, maniacal, genocidal kind of aura to him. And that speech he gave on Starkiller Base in front of all the First Order was very reminiscent of Hitler giving some speech. And I just thought it was, it was fantastic imagery and his character seemed very intense and very dark. And then in this movie, he was the butt of all the jokes. Like, don't get me wrong, I found it humorous with the whole Poe Dameron prank calling him or whatever, but at the same time, I kind of felt like it betrayed General Hux's character right from the offset, and that was a bit annoying. One character who was a complete waste of time and blatantly just put in there for merchandise is Captain Phasma. Once again, she gets about two minutes of screen time, and it would appear gets killed off this time. Now, there's two things that are really bugging me, okay? First of all, they've, they've clearly just tried to make another Boba Fett, because back in the old trilogy, Boba Fett didn't actually get that much screen time, yet he's become this iconic character, right? I think they've attempted that with Captain Phasma, and, and it it's just hasn't paid off. You know, she's very forgettable. The only thing that's good about her is her, her armor, her chrome armor, which is great for selling toys. The other thing that's annoying me very, very much, which is quite bizarre, is all the press conferences has the actress whose name evades me right now from Game of Thrones. She's great as, as Brienne in Game of Thrones. I really enjoy her character, but because of how much screen time she gets in the Star Wars movies, she should not be at those press conferences doing all that sort of stuff with the Star Wars team because she is such a minor character. She is essentially a glorified extra. And yet because of who she is and her place within like the, the nerd universe with Game of Thrones, she has all this airtime with like Mark Hamill and, and Daisy Ridley and Adam Driver on these press tours. And I'm just thinking like, why is she there? Why is she there? Like, Carrie Fisher's daughter had more screen time and dialogue in this film than Captain Phasma did. Speaking of Carrie Fisher, I think you all know what's coming. That CGI moment where she kind of like, uh, glides through, glides through space. No, uh, that really pulled me out of the movie. I was just like, please God, no, this isn't happening. What I thought they were gonna do, well, okay, let me take you through the whole thing. So. Kylo Ren not pressing the button, fantastic moment. Fantastic moment, shows that he's not completely gone. It gets shot down anyway by the people around him, cool. I did think, because I thought Carrie Fisher was going to die in that moment, I thought, cool, that's a pretty savage send off, but fair enough. Then when she twitched her finger, I thought, oh my God, they're gonna address the fact that she's extremely force sensitive and she's gonna like, pull one of the First Order ships into another one or something as like her last dying moment, this is gonna be epic. Wait, she's opening her up. Wait, what's happening? What? Why is she gliding forward? Please stop that, I don't like it. No, 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 no. Okay, you're gonna put her in a coma for the rest of the film. Okay, cool, cool. So I think they really dropped the ball on that one. Plus, obviously, as we all know, she sadly passed away. So now they have Princess Leia who is alive and they've already said they don't want to CGI, like remake her for the next film. So they're gonna have to address that, which they could have just got away with 
how I just explained, out in space, using the force as a dying moment to, I don't know, give the resistance that little, little helping hand in her last dying moments. And finally, the last thing that kind of jarred me off, Finn should have died. He should have sacrificed himself. How they built up the moment, it was just like, he, you know, he is finally facing his fears. He's finally just going straight at the First Order. It kind of felt like his arc was was pretty much finished and he could have quite a, a momentous send-off and sacrifice himself for the Resistance and really, you know, give one last middle finger, if you like, to the First Order in, in, in crippling their big door ramming gun. But instead, Jar Jar Rose, as she is being called, comes in, swoops in, smashes him out of the way, which, to be fair, could have killed him on impact anyway, and, and kisses him. And we're supposed to feel an emotional attachment, even though you know for a fact that Finn is in love with Rey, and Finn and Rose just don't have that chemistry. It, it just didn't work, and Finn... I was, I was like, shit, he's, he's now going to kill himself. This is crazy. Like, he's, he's now going to... Oh, okay, he, he didn't took the weight away from the moment and, and ruined what could have been an extremely iconic moment in the Star Wars saga. Okay, less of the bad, now on to the good, yeah? I'm gonna start off with that spectacular spectacle. The light speed collision. So pink, purple, hair, General Lady, Holdo, I believe. After watching a lot of the capsules explode, realizes that she could turn around and fire herself into the big bad First Order ship and cripple them, which she does, and it is magnificent. And that moment where it cuts through and there's just the wide shot of it just sliced in half and all the destroyers just exploding and it's complete silence. It was just incredible, and you could tell that, that that shot would look perfectly on a canvas. Like, it would look incredible. It really would. Here's one that a lot of people have criticised, which I personally really liked. I liked how much Luke had changed. I liked his quips, his mannerisms. I liked the fact that he threw the lightsaber over his shoulder. I liked the fact that he was kind of done with the Force and moody and grumpy. And I know a lot of reviewers have been like, that's not Luke. Luke wouldn't do that thing is they're they're looking at Luke with rose tinted glasses they're looking at him from like return of the Jedi if you like and you have to think like 30 years has passed the dude's been through a fucking lot he's become a hermit he he failed his nephew he failed his sister he failed his best friend he failed the force he you know he he is very very troubled you know psychologically and he's he is going to be different you know, I'm not being funny, if you go through something like, you know, failing your sister, failing your best friend, taking away their son, turning your nephew into a genocidal maniac, over the course of 30 years, you might be a slightly different person to what you are today. So I liked the, what they did with Luke personally, and one of my favourite moments was, obviously now we know it's a hologram projected, but or a force hologram, but when all those beams are going at Luke, and the dust settles and he just goes like that. I was like, sick. I really liked Poe's arc. His character arc I thought was great. You know, a bit of a hot shot. Then over the course of the film, they're clearly nurturing him to be the leader of the resistance. I really like him as a character. I think he's fantastic. And I think he had some fantastic dialogue in the film. And yeah, I just think he's a cool character. And I'm really looking forward to seeing where they take him in the next film. Obviously with the absence of General Organa, aka Princess Leia, aka of course Carrie Fisher, I do believe that Poe Dameron will be the leader of the Resistance. One bit that made me laugh out loud both times I watched it was in fact uh, <laughs> Luke's titty milk moment where he milks the space walrus and sort of gives it a <clears throat> as it like falls down his face. That was just so funny. I was just like, wow, Luke, Luke Skywalker titty milk moment. That's 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 something else. And my final good bit about Star Wars: The Last Jedi is 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 a massive scene. Is a massive scene. Lots of different components. This could have this bit could have taken up three or four of these these moments. You know, good bits. So we'll start with, of course, Snoke's death. Didn't see it coming. My jaw hit the floor when I, th I thought when when the lightsaber was turned, and I was like, oh, here we go. He's going to turn the lightsaber on. It's going to wound him, and Snoke's going to get away to fight another day. No, 
He cut him in half and Snoke is dead. Whoa. Then ensues one of the best lightsaber fights I've ever seen with Rey and Kylo fighting back to back against the Praetorian Guards. Two fantastic kills, Rey dropping the lightsaber so she can come down and cut the dude in the stomach and then in the throat. And of course Rey throwing the lightsaber to Kylo for him to turn it on in someone's face. Then the gravitas of Kylo Ren, I was like, oh my god, Kylo Ren is actually going to go back to the light side, holy shit. And then just like that, flipping it on his, on his head, oh my god, Rey is about to go to the dark side. Holy shit, this is insane. I didn't see this coming. And then of course they go back to being at loggerheads. But that story is far from done. Far from done. And I can see there being one final turn. I, I can see Ray. I can see maybe Kylo coming back to the light and Ray going to the dark or some shit in the next film. <sighs> I don't know, but that was by far my, my favourite scene from the movie. That whole Snoke dying, then them fighting, Ray, Kylo looking to go to the light side, then Ray looking to go to the dark side. It was just epic. It was so cool. And I want to say one thing. One thing that was addressed. Ray's parents. I think that that is a massive misdirect by Kylo Ren. And I say this because in The Force Awakens, a First Order officer says to Kylo Ren that the droid got away with a girl from Jakku. And he says, what girl? And then slashes the fuck out of the command computers, right? So if, if Rey is truly no one, what was that all about? So is Kylo Ren just saying that she's no one just to get her to side with him. Maybe he, she is Palpatine's daughter or something like that and he knows that and so he wants to control that power rather than her realizing her heritage and then realizing her potential, I don't know. Alternatively, I am completely cool with her being absolutely no one and having no lineage and, and just kind of being a metaphor for, you know, anyone can become something, I guess. One last thing I really loved, because the more I've been talking about it, the more it's all been coming back. I just loved how self-aware the film was, you know, and it kind of it kind of ties into Luke's Luke's quirkiness and Luke's quips, but the way he was like, I'm, I'm just an old man, what do you think? I'm just going to walk up to the First Order with a laser sword and defeat them. It's just like, that's, that's, that's awesome. You know, just little, little things like that I really enjoyed. If I was going to throw in one more negative, it was probably there was just a little bit too much Disney comedy in there, you know. Some serious bits were kind of undermined by comedy. A little bit like in Thor Ragnarok, but anyway guys, that was it. Those were five good, five bad moments from The Last Jedi. Overall, I absolutely loved the film. I really enjoyed it. I will see it again before it comes out of the cinemas, for sure. That will make it three times so far. I know this is a little bit late, but like I said, I... I I wanted to absorb the movie, I wanted to see what everyone else was saying, see if it would change my perspective of the film and just give myself a little bit of time to really process it so I could give like a, a true a true analysis of good and bad for that movie because had I have done this at 4 o'clock in the morning when I got back from the midnight viewing, it would have just been like, oh my god the movie's amazing, there's absolutely nothing wrong with it, Jesus Christ. So, you know, sometimes you need to process these things to give an honest review. but. But yeah, that's it guys. Um, I'm guessing if you got to this bit, obviously you've seen the movie. Please tell me down below. You don't have to do five and five. Just tell me one good, one bad thing. Or you can do five good, five bad if you really wanted. Um, let me know what you think about my good and my bad. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Let me know down in the comments. Do you just hate Star Wars? Let me know down in the comments. Thank you so much guys. I really appreciate it. Like, share and subscribe. See you in the next one. Bye bye for now.